toes this year. I mean, I walk all the time. Who, you know, it is not fun to be up here trying to preach the gospel with fractured toes. And I took the tape off for tonight because it's not very cute. I stumbled up a set of steps and fractured one, the one next to my big toe. Then, in my workout regime, I was doing these things called calf raises where you get way up on your toes and broke the one next to that one then. <laughs> I'm trying to do what's right. I'm working out. Then, just about the time it started feeling better, I rebroke the first one. I have no idea how I did that. You know what? This too shall pass. You know, I mean, I went to a very good foot doctor. You know what his great advice was? It is what it is. It'll get well. So, you know, that's life. I don't know what kind of allergies you guys have here in Arkansas, but they are nasty. <laughs> Do you have some kind of special brand of allergies here or what? I don't <laughs> So I'm just making a point that you don't have to be unhappy because you don't feel perfect or everything is not going exactly the way you want it to. God's power enables you to preach with fractured toes, without fractured toes. With drainage in your throat, without drainage in your throat. Come on, are you with me tonight? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Luke 10, 19. Behold, I have given you power. I have given you authority and power. We're going to talk about that authority tomorrow morning, tomorrow night. To trample upon serpents, which means evil spirits, and scorpions, and physical and mental strength and ability over all the power. Now, please notice that we have power. The devil has power. We have authority. There's nothing there that says the devil has authority. only authority that the enemy has is what we give him through lack of knowledge or through passivity, which is just sitting by lazily letting him do whatever he wants to do and not aggressively coming against him. You know, if you didn't plan to be here all weekend, you ought to change your plans. <laughs> and you ought to go get some of your beat down, broken up, messed up, downtrodden Christian friends. <laughs> we want to do nothing but complain all the time. And bring them over here and say, I got your answer. Let's go. And then it goes on to say that scripture, and nothing shall by any means harm you. It doesn't say nothing will ever come against you, but it won't have ultimate victory over you. And then in Ephesians 1.19, well actually starting in verse 17, Paul prayed three prayers for the church at Ephesus that are so important. First he said, I pray that you will know God personally for yourselves, know God. Don't have secondhand faith. Have your own faith. Have your own relationship with God. Have your own experience with God. Know your Bible for yourself. Don't try to have it through somebody else. The second thing he's prayed is that they would know who they were in Christ. You've got to put on righteousness. Be confident. Hold your head up high. I am a child of God and I will not be defeated. And then the third thing that he prayed was that those believers in Ephesus would know the power that was available to them 
who would believe. So even back then we had believers who didn't know anything about the power of God. You know why? Because the devil wants to hide that from us. You have power available to you. Power to overcome temptation. Power to see addictions broken off of your life. Power to deal with annoying, irritating people. And actually feel sorry for them instead of getting angry at them. Come on, we can get there. Granted, it may take all the way till Saturday morning, but we can get there. Are you with me? Power. We have the power to love the unlovely. We have the power to be peaceful in a storm. We have the power to be joyful in adverse circumstances. We have the power to help other people when we are hurting so bad ourselves that we can't hardly stand it. We have the power to wait and to wait well. We have the power to be patient. We have the power to do whatever we need to do through Christ who strengthens us. Amen. In Joel chapter 3, verse 10, it says, Let the weak say, I am strong. So just in closing tonight, let me give you a little encouragement to be very careful what you say. You're going to, when, when it's, when things are difficult, you're going to have a thought, I can't do this anymore. Well, that's not God putting that in your mind. The mind is the battlefield. It's where Satan attacks us and hopes to win the battle. If he can get us thinking weak thoughts and speaking weak words, then we will have weak lives. The moment you hear one of those, I just, I can't, I can't. I really had to laugh on Wednesday morning. I was working out with my trainer and I've been doing it now for seven years diligently, three days a week if I'm in town, sometimes twice. And, and uh, <laughs> I was doing these things they call sissy squats and trust me, they're not for sissies. <laughs> and I was down with the pulley, get ready to push myself up. And I heard my flesh say to me loud and clear, honestly. And it, it was really comical. See, but if you don't recognize these things, then you can be defeated. I heard this loud and clear. I really need a break from all of this. I mean, just clear. I really need a break from all of this. And I thought right away, well, you ain't getting one. You're not getting one. Let me tell you something. The enemy will talk to you. Your flesh will talk to you. <laughs> and we have to know the word of God. I mean know the word of God for ourselves. It's not good enough just to have somebody else preach to you. You need to take these scriptures that we've talked about. And you need to look them up. And you need to meditate on them. What does Mark chapter 4 say? The measure of thought and study that you put into the truth that you hear is the measure of virtue and knowledge that will come back to you again. It's not how well somebody else preaches to you. It's the measure of thought and study that you put into the Word. Come on, don't be a lazy Christian. Don't be somebody who wants to just park on a pew somewhere and have some preacher spoon feed you the word of God and then pray all your problems off of you when the devil gets after you. Come on, I'm trying to put a little fire in you tonight. Your life won't be so boring if you'll get busy doing what you're supposed to be doing. Amen. So if you know the word, then when the devil lies to you, you can recognize it right away. 
And you can say, that's not God, because I know God's word, and I don't believe that. And furthermore, I'm not going to repeat it. whisper in your mind, I can't do this. But you say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Let the weak say, I am strong. And that doesn't mean that we deny problems, but we deny them the right to rule us. I'm not saying deny your problems. I'm not saying that you never ask anybody to pray for you. I'm going through this, pray for me. Sometimes you need to talk to a friend. Sometimes you need to vent a little. But we don't need to talk about them from daylight till dark. And just rehearse them over and over and over and over. You know, the more you rehearse something, the better you get at it. Did you hear me? The Bible says we are to meditate on the Word of God. Well, what does that mean? I thought meditation was an Eastern religion and we needed to stay away from that. Come on, the devil never had one good idea in his whole life. I mean, God was the one who first said meditate on the Word. And that means to roll it over and over and over in your mind and mutter it under your breath and speak it out loud. Well, I don't know how to meditate. Yeah, you do. You meditate on your problems all day long. How many of you can spend the whole day meditating on what's wrong with the person you're married to? Come on now. How many of you can spend the whole day meditating on how pitiful and pathetic you are and how nobody ever does anything for you and you do all the work around here and you're just so pitiful and oppressed? See, you know how to meditate. Oh, well, you better be glad I'm about out of time. <laughs> Let the weak say, I am strong. Let's all stand up. Thanks for listening. Grow stronger in your faith with today's offer, How to Release God's Power.